Hi. I want to take a minute and talk a little bit about NFTs from a more generalist standpoint. It's no secret that NFTs right now have a bad rep. I mean, just look at some of the comments from my last video and you'll see exactly what I mean. But how do we get here and why? Well, that's exactly what I want to talk about today. Hopefully shedding light on why NFTs have acquired such a negative side while allowing me to make and edit a video that's not 50 minutes long, because it gets really tiring. You've probably heard this everywhere by now, but NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens. But what the hell does that actually mean? From the depths of Google, it says, fungible of goods contracted for without an individual specimen being specified, replaceable by another identical item, mutually interchangeable. So fungible means an item that can be replaced by another identical item. Which stands to reason that non-fungible means that it's an item that cannot be replaced by another identical item. But Tara, you say, I can literally go open up an NFT, download its contents, and now I have it. How is that non-fungible? I actually want to show you a little bit of an interesting experiment. I'm going to quickly create a brand new NFT with a picture of this coin in it. So I'll quickly go to loopring.io, log in, put in some details, upload the picture to the internet, and boom, brand new NFT in my wallet. Easy. However, it's only the relationship between the NFT and my wallet that's unique. The picture itself exists in a place called the IPFS, which, without going into too much detail, is a decentralized internet file storage system that anyone can access at any time. Think of it like Imager. Anyone with the correct link can see the pictures on there. The NFT just contains a link to that file in the IPFS storage system. But then, if the file is not actually in the NFT, but just a link to where it's stored, doesn't that mean I can just go ahead and create another NFT that links to the same exact file? Ta-da! We now have two seemingly identical NFTs that link to the same item, so they are the same. This non-fungible stuff is nonsense. Well, not exactly. The non-fungible aspect of the non-fungible tokens comes from the relationship between them and its existence on the blockchain. Looking at the blockchain, I can easily identify who the past and present owners of the NFTs were and is. I can also see how many times they exchange hands. I can see if there was any transaction involved when exchanging hands, like say payments. And I can most importantly see which wallet created it. So who the original creator of the NFT is. This makes it an incredible powerful tool to provide proof of ownership of something. Say for example you own a car. The proof that you own said car comes from the ownership document. In the UK this is called the V5C. This ownership document is issued by the government with a specific serial number and car details on it and most importantly with your details also written on it to prove that you are indeed the owner of that car. When you want to sell or transfer the car, you need to fill in the correct part of the form, send it back to the government, and then they issue a new document specifying who the owner is, and they will usually send it to the new owner. Now let's do away with all of that, and instead say that the government has a well-known crypto wallet, and everyone knows what that address of that wallet is. The government, the government wallet then generates an NFT which represents the proof of ownership of a specific car and then sends that NFT to you since you bought the car. We now know that you own that particular car because it's in your wallet. To transfer the car to someone else, you simply send the car NFT to their wallet. Now they own that car. No unnecessary form filling required and no interaction with the government whatsoever. But let's say I'm a bad actor. And instead of sending the original NFT to my buyer, I create an identical NFT, since I have the original, and then send that one. Well, the problem is I don't have access to the government's well-known wallet. So that clone NFT that I create will be an obvious fake, and my buyer will know this immediately by simply checking the NFT once they receive it. This is how NFTs were intended to be used. This is the non-fungible part of the non-fungible tokens. But this is not what was sold to the general audience, now was it? Through a combination of misinformation, lack of understanding of the technology, greed, and pandemic-induced boredom, the NFT market became this boom of nonsense pictures flying around at exorbitant prices. Some called it the digital artist's revolution. Digital artists can now go and sell their own work at the price that they want to, and then freely send it to whoever they want. 
But what really happened is a bunch of software engineers created algorithms that quickly generated a large amount of samey looking images with just slight variations. And then around that algorithm created a massive marketing campaign to sell those NFTs as fast as possible. While that was happening, actual artists that created beautiful pieces of work went unnoticed because they could never possibly compete with the sheer speed and marketing capabilities of these companies selling samey looking NFTs. Thus, much like nuclear fission being used for weapons of mass destruction instead of generating electricity, the technology left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And, over time, the bubble of expensive computer-generated NFTs collapsed, millions being stuck with now worthless NFTs tied to their crypto wallets. But, as one door closes, another opens. Just because the technology was misused, it doesn't make that technology bad. Technology is technology, and it progresses regardless. NFTs are now becoming cheaper and easier to create and transfer between people, making them feel more like commodities rather than expensive playthings of the crypto rich. Their use is becoming more diverse as ownership tokens, their true purpose, as well as becoming distribution containers for all sorts of media. Pictures, songs, 3D assets, or even video games. Check out my video on how to create a video game inside of an NFT. A technology is neither good or bad. It's our job as people to use it for good in order to achieve a better and brighter future. And thus, I hope you give NFTs another chance. If we'd focus less on having arguments about their speculative value in an online market and start thinking about how we could use them for real-world applications like proof of ownership and origin of real-world items, then I can see this technology having a bright future ahead. And that's the video! If you liked it, please remember to hit like and subscribe. If you didn't like it or don't agree with me, please tell me in the comments. Conversation is important and differing points of view are important. This is how new and better ideas are formed after all. So hit me up in the comments with your thoughts. Catch you next time. Peace.